Hi, Kathy again. Um, goats, dogs, and old people. And please subscribe. This is a little on a different side. Um, I had a call a little while ago from a friend of mine who takes care of her mom. And her mother's been in and out of the nursing home, so she's really concerned about her. Um, because now they're changing how people get to doctors and testing and stuff. And they're trying to think of um, the transportation services for Medicaid and that in this state will be taking the same, the COVID people as well as the nursing home people. Now it's a valid worry, but um, the people who come to us um, it's professional and integral and they work hand in hand but they told me over a month ago that they have set up it's like it's the ambulance service and my dad gets checked once a week and it's pretty neat service and um, they let me know that if they get a COVID call they have a dedicated um, truck and staff so that like the COVID people don't come into our homes. Right now, nobody who does the home services and none of their um, clients on home services have um, COVID. So that's, that's really good and it's comforting, but if somebody doesn't know. So if you're in that kind of a situation where they're gonna be changing how transportation is done, just call them directly and ask them because um, they're not going to lie but I think there's a lot of things that they don't always release because it starts like a firestorm um, they say a little thing that's what happened here um, the governor made this little statement and now people are like going nuts so this poor girl she's all upset and she called me and wanted to know if has anybody been checking on me? And I'm like, well, you know, I keep in touch with my family, stuff like that. But it seems that people who used to call her, um, they don't anymore. So she's feeling very alone because people are very involved with their own worries and how they're going to manage and how they're going to do things and people not keep being paid. And you know, remember, if you're not being paid, you're also you're not out shopping, you're not doing Starbucks every day <laughs> and stuff like that. So some things are going to work themselves out. Um, and then there's like the, um, the, the federal monies and stuff like that. So something, it's going to work out somehow, but that's like the least of your worries. Um, it's people who you used to check on and then all of a sudden you stop. It leaves a huge, huge gap. So if there was like a neighbor or a friend or a relative or something who's a caretaker or an elderly person maybe used to go visit them every other week and now you can't, it's the same with the people in the nursing homes, don't get me wrong, because they can't get visitors as all, well, you know, at all, but they're not at home, like by themselves. They have staffs and things that are taking care of them. So hopefully they're in a good nursing home, like the one across the street from me is awesome. It's really, really good. Great staff. Um, they're clean. And well, I should say so far, cause you never, never know. <laughs> but um, so far, so good. Um, a lot of traffic. For nobody being out, it's a lot of traffic. But let's try, if you remember, you know, if you, are you used to stopping in on somebody? Just give them a quick call or something. It takes no time. Um, if there's somebody who can't afford something, order them a pizza. You know, have it delivered to their house. Call them up and tell them so they don't think it's some weird person. But that might be a nice thing to do. The little things that we used to do and not think of, like I've done it, everybody's done it. Uh, somebody couldn't, like they, they paid for the coffee for the person behind them, or they bought a sandwich for somebody, or the cops are freezing and you stop and get them a cup of coffee or something. Um, I've been at a restaurant where 
a girl was crying because her card was declined and she didn't know why. She was legitimately panicking. Um, so I paid for her dinner, but it was anonymous. I didn't want her to know. But I'm not out now. I, you can't do things like that. So a lot of these pay it forward things are not happening either. So any kind of little thing you can do, like that might brighten somebody's day. That could make a huge difference. You really don't know how much of a difference you make to somebody. It's really, really true. So I, for a few days, it was like gray and gloomy and everything around here. And although we're out, we're out not in the city, you know, we're out in the country-ish. So in some ways, it didn't seem all that different, except for my joke is that the only thing now is that even to go to the store for a gallon of milk, I have to do like massive like decontamination. So, um, but I mean, you can hear it. This car is going by and pretty much things are as normal. The only thing that's changed is we're not getting, um, the psychologist is calling for my dad. He doesn't come and visit. He calls and, um, the weekly visits from the um, ambulance guys. Um, there, I we stopped them. Um, they would have kept coming, but my dad said, "Like somebody else needs it more than I do. I'm fine. You're checking on me, you know." And um, it it just to him didn't seem necessary. And also, he didn't want to have the chance of being exposed because you don't know what's going to happen in the coming weeks. They're all safe and negative now but you don't know what's going to happen and i didn't blame them so i told them like we'll just put everything on hold if i have a problem or if something comes up i'll call and let you guys know but until then take the time that you'd be here and use it on somebody else so that works out well for them because they're they're stretched out to the limit man and i mean they before it all started they even they knew it was coming and they added on people and they added on staff and they added trucks and they tried to make sure that they had all the supplies they needed and it's just a crazy thing so it's like it's just the more I think about it I just wanted to share that that somebody called me knowing that I really can't do anything about it but calling me to see how things are which makes me feel bad because on a Normally, I would run up and visit her, and I don't know what I would do. Just like sit and talk or something, you know, so it's just very, very hard, you know. Some people, uh-oh, look. And I gotta watch it because uh, Willow's out. And she's not too big for a hawk. No, nah, it's just coasting. I think the hawk is afraid of living here. I mean, being around here. If you're new to this, our rooster goes up against the hawk and wins. He's lost his tail a couple of times and he's got a couple of gashes. Uh, he's missing most of his comb. His comb and everything used to be giant and it's like, no. So. Hopefully the, it's learned its lesson because I don't really want to go like ape with a hawk. But yeah, it's cool, so. Well, anyway, but it was just a little like a little reminder to, to try to keep people in your thoughts and not just in your thoughts, but call them and not just an email or a text. Don't text, please don't text like a quick little hi, how you doing, whatever is not the same really if somebody's really feeling alone they really need to hear someone speak to them so hopefully that will help you a little bit if you're wondering and if you are a caretaker and are feeling like that um don't be afraid to call someone and you don't necessarily have to call your friends um i know around here the samaritans have been um advertising and they also, somewhere there is a number for, um, it's just like mental health. I think through the State Department. Here you call 211. So I don't know if that's nationwide or not. 
but you can call 211 and tell them you need to speak to somebody, especially if you're depressed about like the virus and being alone and you don't know about work and you don't know about school, or you don't know about kids or you don't know about you. What are you going to do? Am I going to lose my house? Am I going to lose my job? Um, like there's a million things that you could get all crazy about. But tomorrow will take care of itself. If you worry about it, worry solves nothing. It wears you out. It makes you sick. It takes all your energy. And then you don't have energy when you really need it. So try not to worry. Just let tomorrow take care of itself. And do what you have to do today. Take care of today. Make yourself happy today. Get through today. That's all you have to do. And then one at a time, pretty soon, we'll all be back to normal. So maybe there'll be a new normal. I don't know. Maybe it'll be the same old normal. In some ways, I'm not minding this because this is reminding me of when I was little. Sunday, everything was closed. Well, a lot of things are closed now. But like, there's not a lot of traffic. I took my dad for a ride and um, it wasn't a whole bunch of traffic and nobody's like yelling. You didn't hear yelling and screaming and all that kind of stuff. <sighs> So in some ways, there are positives to it, if you can find them. So please try to find them. And please try to keep people in your thoughts and keep in touch with them. Try not to let anybody fall down by the wayside. Okay, I hope you're all having a great day. I hope it's as great as wherever you live. I hope it's as beautiful as it was here today because it was just fabulous, especially after like we had two, maybe two weeks or so of just you know, rain and gloomy and blah. <laughs> so um, I'll leave you with that. But um, I'll leave you with that. So I hope you have a good rest of your day. Until next time, stay safe and don't forget to subscribe so I can get this out to as many people as I want at this as I can. All right? And don't forget to surprise. Don't forget to subscribe so I can get this out to as many people as I possibly can. Thanks. Take care. Have a good day. Till next time.